Okay guys, good morning! Today I'm going to discuss the brachial plexus anatomy. I'm sure you have a hard time memorizing it when you're studying it. And so therefore, I'm going to use my hand. Okay, so we were going to use the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, and the little finger. Guys, can you still recall in anatomy? This portion, we call it anterior part, and this is actually considered to be the posterior. Oh, guys, so let's label this one as C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. For Filipinos, they are fond of playing, playing jack and boy. And so, it's gonna be like this. So what happened, the thumb and the index finger approximate together and retain the middle finger and the ring and the little finger will join together. And that would mean if I'm going to represent that here they would be together, C7, the C8, and the T1. And then look at this guys. I told you earlier that this is actually the anterior portion and this is the posterior portion and so therefore we have this together traveling this area that would still be lateral and this one traveling along this it's medial and of course this portion this portion this portion, traveling posteriorly would become your posterior cord okay let's label upper middle and lower Guys, this will give us anterior division. This will give anterior division. And this one will have one division. And where is the posterior division? Posterior division. Posterior division. And the posterior division. So that would be posterior cord. And this would be your medial cord and this would be your lateral cord okay guys let's go back to my hand to my forearm so we said that this one anterior division anterior division this would actually course along this that would be your lateral cord and this one would be along the medial side that would be your medial cord and the posterior division, posterior division, posterior division, joined together, posteriorly located, guys, so that will become your posterior cord. Okay, let me proceed. Follow the lateral cord. It would actually go to this area. Oh, what are the muscles in this compartment? These are your biceps brachii, coracobrachialis, and your brachialis. And what is the nerve that enervates the three muscles? Musculocutaneous nerve. Very good, guys. So let's follow this course. This would become your musculocutaneous. Right? And what about on the medial cord? Anatomically correct, guys. This area is actually supplied by the ulnar nerve. And this one is actually the medial side of the forearm. This one is the medial side of the arm. Guys, all of them starts with letter M. Of course, except letter U for the ulnar. So we have medial cutaneous to the forearm, medial cutaneous to the arm, and you have your ulnar nerve. What about the posterior cord? You have ULTRA. So you have five branches. Okay, let's name them. First, you have ULTRA. How many of you guys are familiar with the structure ULTRA in Pasig City? Okay, so this would be upper. This would be lower, subscapular. This would be thoraco-dorsal, 
this would be radial, this would be axillary. Guys, notice that they are from here, posterior, if you are going to follow that, this one is radial, this one is axillary, and at the back, you do have all those structures, upper subscapular, lower subscapular, and thoracodorsal. It is easier to remember now because they are located posteriorly. Okay, guys, let's continue. The median nerve is actually from branches coming from the lateral cord and the medial cord. So how do you remember that using your hand? So look at this. You try to approximate this and this one. It's actually what? What's the action? It's flexion of the wrist. And what enervates the flexor muscles of the wrist? Median nerve. So that's how you remember it. Median nerve. Another way to remember it, if you're going to approximate the thumb and the little finger, and you try to flex, what letter will you form? By imagination, it's letter M. And that's how you remember the median nerve. Are we done, guys? Not yet. There are other branches that we need to put into our illustration. Lateral cord has another branch that starts with letter L. That would be the lateral pectoral nerve. And there is one more letter M under the medial cord, which is your medial pectoral nerve. What about at the root level? We said earlier that this is C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. And this is C5. I'm going to point it on the back and I'm pointing it to the muscle which is levator scapulae. And what is the nerve? Very good. It's a dorsal scapular nerve. Okay, C5, C6, C7. What letter I'm forming, guys? It's letter L. And it's actually the first letter of this nerve. What is that nerve? Very good. It's a long thoracic nerve. So, long thoracic nerve. Are we done? Not yet. There are two more branches coming from the upper trunk. I said this is C5 and this is C6. I'm going to cross and reach for the muscle up on my back and below this clavicle. And what are those nerves, guys? Yes, it's suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius. Suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius. So these are the two nerves coming from the upper trunk. Guys, let's summarize once again. Let's try to recall C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. Jack and Poi, this is going to be like this. The C5 and the C6 join together become the upper trunk. This would become the middle trunk, and this would become the lower trunk. If you are going to follow the course, it would end as musculocutaneous nerve. And of course, here, if you are going to follow all the branches, would become your ulnar nerve, medial cutaneous to the forearm, and the medial cutaneous to the arm. There is one branch here, we call it the lateral pectoral nerve, and the medial pectoral nerve, which is responsible for this. Or the pectoralis muscles major and minor and that means anterior division of this anterior division of this joint together becomes your yes the lateral cord and this side your the anterior division becomes the medial cord guys what about on the back which is the posterior the posterior division of this posterior division of this posterior division of this will become your posterior cord Guys, it's easy to remember. 
posteriorly located, their fourth posterior cord, and what are the five branches? Ultra, upper subscapular, lower subscapular, thoracodorsal, radial, and axillary. And of course, what will be the next is the median nerve. How do you remember it? This one, you just approximate the thumb and the little finger. You do the flexion and that is innervated by the median nerve. You try to position it like this, you will see the letter M. You just imagine it. That's your median nerve. And of course, all other branches, this one pointing to the back, that would be your dorsal scapular nerve, the C5, C6, that's pointing to the other side, suprascapular nerve, nerve to subclavius, and of course, C5, C6, C7, that would be your long thoracic nerve. Guys, I hope you have learned a lot today on how to remember the brachial plexus. On the next lesson, we're going to plot the muscles innervated by these peripheral branches coming from the brachial plexus. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and hit the button. Bye, guys!